Hi, my name is Chris Knight. I'm Director of Operations with the Copper Scroll Project. I would like to introduce to you two good friends of mine, Jim Barfield and Quinn Shipper. We are at the state capitol where Jim and I just got through meeting with 12 state senators concerning the Copper Scroll Project. While there, Quinn came up to visit us at the state capitol and Quinn is the head of Oikos Network. So we took some time to sit down with Jim and Quinn and do a little interview and this is the interview that we would like to share with you. Well, good morning, it's April 1st, and I'm here at the State Capitol with Jim Barfield, who's head of the Copper Scroll Project. Jim, you arrived this morning at the invitation. Can you tell us a little bit about what's happened here today? Yeah, we get, uh, I got a phone call from a, actually an old friend of mine, who is now a state senator, uh, Don Barrington is his name. Really nice guy, he and I go way back, but they invited Chris and I to come here today to discuss the Copper Scroll Project, all the things that are connected with it, can you just give a little synopsis of what the project sure. is? Absolutely. Maybe how you got involved. The, the Copper Scroll is a uh, it is a verbal map that explains where items of the Tabernacle of Moses are buried, how to locate them, how deep to dig, and it gives all the information required to be able to find all these items. The scroll was found in 1952 in a cave near the Dead Sea, and. It, it hasn't been deciphered since 1952. Well, lo and behold, early one morning in December of 2006, I get up, say my morning prayers, and start to work on this thing. Took a break from my other biblical research and thought, I'll just give it a try. I figured it out. It was the most amazing thing. It was almost as if I knew where these things were already. It was that easy. It, I wouldn't be this confident but the Israeli government, uh, the archaeologists from the Israeli government, rabbis in Israel, the head of the Antiquities Authority, Shuka Dorfman, they've all seen my research and they've all just kind of went, oh my gosh, he's done it. So now we got to go back. I can tell you that I've broken the code, which is really not a code. I've broken the code on the Copper Scroll and we're going back to Israel now to see if those items are still there. We got acquainted Oh, a little over a year ago, I was in Oklahoma Apostolic Prayer Network meeting a conference actually for the Apostolic Prophetic Conference in February of 2008. And at that conference, Dr. Ganat's daughter, Nama, uh, did a little presentation. I had an opportunity to speak with her afterwards. And uh, Nama took an interest in the Copper Scroll Project. And where did that go after February of 2008? Well, it was very interesting that. Uh... Naama actually uh, knew the archaeologist that's working on this project now and uh, she encouraged me to get a hold of him and to remind him that if he didn't assist us that she was going to do mean and ugly things to him. <laughs> so that was it was really and it was amazing. I mean Israel is not a big country but for her to have known Yuval as well as she did uh, she actually introduced Yuval to his wife who was her best friend so it all made it became full circle, and uh, we all we've all now made contact. We all realize that we've had uh, friendship through Oklahoma of all places. Well, throughout the whole project, as I followed it, there's been a lot of God's favor on you oh, and huge. Chris. Yeah, doors have opened that only God could have opened. Others have closed oh, yes. that only He could close. I just want to ask you. Um, how can we pray for you? I, I get your updates, we follow along, those of us who are intercessors for you, but what are the one or two top priorities of how to pray over the say these coming weeks particularly as you anticipate your next trip to Israel? One of the senators asked that very same question, identical, just uh, moments ago. He asked, how can we pray for this project? He was expecting some deep uh, spiel about what it, it's simple. We simply ask that they pray that the Father's will be done and that the doors that should be open be open and the doors that should be closed be closed. Simply that, because if the Father's will is done, then Chris and I will be in, in exactly where he wants us, when he wants us there, because it's all about timing at this point. It's all about timing and it's got to be in God's time. Not in what I think it's right, not what Chris thinks it's right, but uh, in Father's time. 
Well, I know that prayer request has been consistent throughout and has been on the top of the list to pray for God's will to be done. I know you mean that sincerely. Absolutely. And obviously, every step on the way, as far as we know, as we can see, yeah. His will is being worked.